Our next speaker I'm going to call is John, Dr. John Carter McKnight, who is a Lincoln Fellow for Applied Ethics at Arizona State University. And he has a very interesting background that's gone uh, from a number of different places, including uh, being in law and now working um, to think about the, the whole ethics of space and other things. And he's going to spend some time talking with us about what are you going to talk about? Well, he's going to talk about habitats <laughs> and viable communities, building viable communities. Good afternoon, everyone. This is a technical track, but what the... Whoa, don't lean on the screen. Okay. This is a technical track, but I want to address our engineers and our policy and political experts to urge you to recognize that the innovation necessary to become a spacefaring civilization isn't limited to propulsion systems and isn't limited to habitat design. Technological systems are part of human, and social, human social and political systems. The people who use those systems, the people who maintain those systems, the people who teach the people who use and maintain those systems are all part of the innovation cycle. That means that engineers have a duty to consider the whole system in design and to recognize the responsibility for the social and the political consequences of their work. All systems design affects people, and people transform their systems. Complex systems generate emergent, often unintended consequences, and sometimes even produce results that are the exact opposite of what designers thought they were going to see. Langdon Winter claims that at least some technologies are inherently political, which means that some, some technical systems are basically democratic by their nature or basically autocratic, which means that regardless of the intent of the designers, regardless of what they want to do with their systems, you get certain very specific kinds of outcomes no matter what. Now you might say that you know, for systems for extreme environments, or technologies we really know pretty well. We've been operating submarines and spacecraft and remote bases for 30, 50, 60, hundreds of years. But those systems are designed for particular kinds of users, often military or quasi-military. And those hardware systems and the social systems of the people who use them fit together, influence each other, shape each other into a single coherent whole. But tourists, industrial workers, and homesteaders in space pose some challenges for technical systems that are designed for strict hierarchy and command and control, which works wonderfully in an extreme environment with military people. This means that if we want justice and democracy in space, we need to engineer it. And not just into our laws, but into our hardware systems themselves. There's been some recognition of this, but primarily from certain American engineers, either libertarians or American exceptionalists, who see in space technology a chance to build new worlds in their own image. Now, if there are other perspectives out there, they're going to have to be argued for. And systems design is a kind of an argument. For example, there's a movement that grew up around Gerald O'Neill's concepts for giant space habitats at Lagrange points that saw these and other closed environments as potential libertarian paradises or vehicles for experimenting on social systems. But others came up with this phrase, airlock despotism, and argued that closed systems really are inherently political, like Langdon Winter was talking about, and that they tend towards strict command and control and away from freedom and experimentation. Robert Zubrin of the Mars Society is one of many Americans who argue for a manifest destiny in space, explicitly drawing on images from the growth of American empire and seeking to recreate the process on other worlds. He argues that the technologies of Mars, smaller scale, cheaper, able to use local resources, tend towards freedom in a way that 10,000 person space cans just don't. Both groups, though, acknowledge and actually are advocating for the social and political consequences of straight-up engineering design. So when we think about humans in space, we tend to start with hardware. <laughs> or we start with ideology. And as we're seeing, there, there are some people who are thinking about the role of both playing with each other. But something that we really need to keep a careful eye on is what ideology is being expressed in hardware when designers don't think they're expressing ideology, because it's there. And there's no guarantee at all that the technical systems we want and the social systems we want are compatible with each other or with our values. 
As we build a human future beyond our own planet, all of us are obligated to consider just what it is that we want to build, hardware and human. Thank you very much.